And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who's guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In The Whistler. Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for The Whistler, rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And now, The Whistler's strange story, Triple Play. On the morning that a cool, distinguished-looking gentleman stepped from his limousine and made his way to the mayor's office at City Hall, casual onlookers would scarcely have suspected that an era in city government was drawing to a close. The gentleman was Daniel Cobbs, known to insiders as the city's political boss, to the average person as owner and publisher of the city's largest newspaper, The Star. And the future looks unusually bright to you, doesn't it, Dan? as you stop at the desk of the mayor's attractive and gracious secretary, Patricia Wolcott. Well, Patricia, is the mayor in? Yes, Dan. Shall I tell him you're here? Oh, I can wait a few minutes. You know, I shouldn't come up here at all. Oh, why not? Your beauty is simply overwhelming. I won't get a stitch of work done all day. (laughs) Oh, Dan. Stupid of me, I know, to fall in love with a woman half the city is pursuing. Not if she's the right woman? Is she? She doesn't know yet, for sure. When do you suppose she will know? In the fullness of time. Now I have work to do. All right, but don't forget who you're having dinner with tonight. How could I? Shall we take in that new play at the Globe afterward? Wonderful. I'll expect you at six, hmm? I better tell Leslie you're waiting. Mr. Cobbs is here to see you. Send him in. Danny going to tell him? Yes, but don't worry about Leslie. He'll take it all right. See you later, darling. Well, how's our mayor this fine morning? Never felt better. What can I do for you, Dan? I'll get right to the point. Don't have much time. I'm meeting my editors this morning at 11. Shoot. It's this way. I'm announcing your retirement from public office this evening in the last edition of The Star. Why, you, you can't be serious. I am. You're not running in the next election because you're tired of public life, Leslie. And are eager to get back to some real living on your farm. Oh, but I well, I don't understand. I've played ball with you, haven't I? That's not the point. No complaints, but uh, frankly, there is a man I'd prefer to see as mayor. Who's that? Myself. Oh, well, I see. Well? Yeah, well, I'll step aside, naturally. Well, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you, but... Well, you... Thought this over carefully, Dan? Of course I have. Yeah, Stump Reynolds is going to be running against you. I don't like to say this, but you won't have much of a chance against Stump. I'll take care of Stump Reynolds, Leslie. All you have to do is get out there and give me your support without any hedging. Yes, I'll welcome the opportunity. I'll do everything I can for you, Daniel. I trust you will. Oh, by the way, I wish you'd see to that reception room before election. It's as cheerful as a tomb. I'd like to have it redecorated before I move in. You could cover those atrocious wire glass windows with some deep red drapes, and uh, a soft gray would do nicely for the walls. Anything else? Yes. I'd like to have the floor done in aquamarine. Aquamarine? That's right, aquamarine. A little unusual, but I like it. Okay, I'll place the contract. I admire your self-confidence, Daniel. <laughs> I'll bet you do. But whether you like it or not, I go after what I want, and I get it. The 
moment of decision is past, isn't it, Dan? You're moving into the limelight on your own. Yes, the puppet master is stepping out on the stage. But as you break the news that you're running for mayor to your editorial board later that evening, you're seized with fear and wonder at what would happen if you lost. That's the one thing you could never face, isn't it, Dan? Defeat. But you manage to thrust aside your fears and bark out instructions to your staff. Quincy, you're in charge of publicity. I want stories in every edition. Faulkner, you'll handle the business end of this campaign, and by heaven's sake, don't count pennies. Harrison, mark this carefully. Yes, sir. I have to beat Stump Reynolds. No one else matters. I want you to take three of your best reporters and go out and get me the dirt on Reynolds. No scandal is too big or too small, understand? Perfectly, Mr. Cobbs. Good. Well, that's all for today, gentlemen. Let's get started. All right, boys. The campaign is underway. There's no turning back now, is there, Dan? The headlines, stories, and pictures announcing your candidacy are all over the evening edition of The Star. And you're a little jittery when you first pick up Patricia. Take her to dinner at your club. But gradually, her beauty and warmth reassure you. And as the evening wears on, you become more confident. After the theater, you stop by her apartment for a drink. I've heard about Stump Reynolds, Dan, but what about this other man that's running? Uh, What's his name, Coleman? John Coleman? Yes. (laughs) Don't worry about poor John. He's always running. Well, I gather he's not much competition. A very poor third. Simple, honest John, they call him. (laughs) I believe he teaches political science at the college. Oh. Patricia, not to change the subject, I'd, uh, I'd like to ask you something. You're being very serious suddenly. I mean to be. No, Dan, please. I... Oh, Dan, you shouldn't have done that. Why not? I said in the fullness of time, remember. I'm in love with you, you know that. Yes, but I want you to wait. I'm not sure that I can, Patricia. Then we'd better not see each other for a while. When will you know? Can I take a rain check until after the election? You're going to be busy campaigning. So that's what you're waiting for. To see if I'm the next mayor. I think you ought to know, Dan. I don't like myself for it, but I'm a very ambitious woman. Don't worry, I'll win. Are you very angry with me? Yes, I am. But I can't blame you. I play to win, why shouldn't you? I'm glad you see it that way, Dan, because that's what I'm doing. Playing to win. Now you're more anxious than ever to be elected mayor, aren't you, Dan? Because you're certain that your election will also mean your marriage to Patricia Wilkett. And Patricia means more than anything in the world to you, doesn't she, Dan? The more you think about Reynolds, the more worried you become. You must head him off. And a few days later, you arrange to meet him at a small cafe close to the city hall. Anything more, sir? No, that's fine, thank you. Stump? I'm satisfied. Now, what do you want, Dan? (laughs) I'm a blunt man myself, and I like a blunt man. We can dispense with the posies. All right, Stump. What will you take to pull out of the race for mayor? Well, I've never been mayor. I wouldn't know what it's worth. Suppose you tell me. Shall we say an appointment as political editor of the Star, $15,000 a year, a 10-year contract? (laughs) Four years ago, Dan, you double-crossed me and switched to Leslie Bryan. You remember that? Oh, nothing personal, Stump. Politics is a rough game. That cuts two ways. And this time, I'm going to get the personal satisfaction of beating the head man myself. You're making a mistake. Let's see what happens at the finish line. You're going to have a fight on your hands, Stump. And I don't play Marcus at Queensbury rules. It'll be a dirty campaign, and before I'm through, you'll be smeared right out of the state. Okay, Dan. But don't forget to pick up the tab. This lunch is on you. Back to the whistler. The 
The campaign is in full swing now, isn't it, Dan? But beneath all your claims of a landslide victory at the polls, the cold fear of defeat is gnawing at you. Stump Reynolds' refusal to be bought off is the big worry. And you're increasingly aware of his threat to your success. Then the all-important speech before the Northside Community Club occurs. John Coleman makes the opening speech. He gets some scattered, polite applause. And Stump Reynolds steps to the speaker's rostrum. You scarcely listen to Reynolds as you watch the audience. See their reactions as he sums up his stand in a daring, shocking Ladies statement. And gentlemen, let me promise you that if I am elected mayor, the first thing I'll do is run Boss Cobbs and his crooked organization right out of the city hall and into the city jail. And then, then I'm going to sweep this town clean of the gangsters and the grafters and the gamblers. A vote for me is a vote for honest government. Following your introduction, which is received with a mere ripple of applause, you step to the speaker's rostrum with fists clenched, Dan, ready to fight back. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests... It is a pleasure to be here this evening among my many friends and readers. Most of you have known me for many years and know how I have always fought for good government and the best interests of our city. You do your best, but the rest of your speech doesn't go well, does it, Dan? And as you leave, your sure defeat is staring you in the face. The next morning, you know it's even worse as you face the leaders of your own organization at an emergency meeting. Do you still figure on beating Reynolds, Dan? I'll beat him yet, Charlie. I know I will. You can make yourself a chunk of money, Dan. The bookies are giving five to one, you lose. I know, I know. Bookies and polls have been wrong before. Yeah, you're the boss, Dan. What you say goes. We all think you ought to pull out and run Leslie Bryan... For re-election. I want a little more time, boys. I'll get something on Reynolds. Some dirt. I promise you I'll find a way to beat him. You don't sleep at all well that night, do you, Dan? And as much as you bully your reporters during the next few days, they can pin nothing of consequence on Stump Reynolds. Then one evening, as you're nervously pacing back and forth in your downtown apartment, the doorbell rings. Patricia. Hello, Dan. I can only stay a minute. Oh, sit down. Drink? Yes, thanks. Scotch and water. I'll fix it right out. You know, I've missed you. I've missed you, too. I suppose you're up to date on the campaign. Yes, that's why I'm here. Hmm. Scotch. Did uh, Leslie Bryan send you with a gentle hint that I quit? No, good news. I'd like to hear some. Leslie's got a tip on Stump Reynolds. What? He's found his weak spot. It uh, seems Reynolds can't keep away from the poker and dice table. Once or twice a week, he sneaks away to a small spot on the outskirts of town called the 611 Club. Are you sure? Quite sure. Thank you, Patricia. Oh, don't thank me. Thank Leslie Bryan. Do that for me, will you? He's been a real friend. Let me get to the phone. I'll talk to you later, darling. It's only a week later that the 611 Club is raided with Stump Reynolds trapped inside. And you wait outside with a full complement of reporters and photographers. This is a police raid. All entrances are covered. Everybody inside, remain where you are. (laughs) The police are bringing him out now. (laughs) Doesn't Stump look dapper in handcuffs? Harrison, get to work. Yes, sir. Joe, get some shots of him and the cops. Pete, train your lens on the patrol wagon. Get some pictures of the cops shoving them in. Then follow them down to the city jail. Be sure to get a big one of Reynolds behind bars. Very good, Harrison, very good. Well, the police are bringing him this way. 
<laughs> Hello, Reynolds. Good to see you. I'll get you for this, Cobbs. I swear it. <laughs> All's fair in love, war, and politics, Mr. Reynolds. <laughs> And the next afternoon, you receive the best news of all, don't you, Dan? It happens while you're celebrating Stump Reynolds' arrest with a few <laughs> political cronies around the radio at a bar in the lobby of the Star Building, waiting for the announcement you know is coming. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a late bulletin from our newsroom. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Stump Reynolds announced just a few moments ago from his campaign headquarters that he is retiring from the race for mayor. Well, <laughs> Mr. Reynolds, who was released from jail this morning following his arrest during a gambling raid, was running on a clean government platform. <laughs> now, back to our music. Gentlemen, a toast, gentlemen, to Stump Reynolds and clean government. <laughs> For the first time in months, you begin to breathe easy, don't you, Dan? Because everything is coming along fine. And you can daydream of being introduced to cheering crowds as Mayor Daniel Cobbs, with Patricia at your side, the beautiful, charming first lady of the city. And then on Monday afternoon, Harrison bursts into your office. Dan, look at these headlines. Headlines? And the telegram and the ledger. What? Daniel Cobbs exposed his wife and child deserter. Yeah, but listen to this. A suit was filed against Daniel Cobbs today in Superior Court by dancer Thelma Evans for $100,000. Thelma Evans? Miss Evans charges that the leading candidate in the race for mayor married her under the name of Paul Evans 10 years ago in Mexico City what? and deserted her in three months. She demands support of their child. It's an outrageous, libelous lie. I, I, I... Yo, what, Dan? Reynolds. How did you get in here? Walked in. I wanted to see your face, Dan. You know it's not true. I know it's not true, but do the vote. I'll have this cheap little Thelma Evans in jail for blackmail. You can't stop anyone from suing you, Dan. <laughs> you do. I'm beginning to see whose fine hand is behind all of this. Well, I'm willing to take part of the credit. I'm warning you. You don't like it when the shoe's on the other foot, do you? <laughs> so long, Dan. No, 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 wait, wait. I'll admit it. You've got me. Oh. Uh, you remember that offer I made you? Political editor, I'll, I'll make it 20000 a year. I wouldn't take it if you made it 100000 Why, you Remember jerk. what you said, Mr. Cobb? All's fair in love, war, and um, politics? <laughs> <laughs> The opposition newspapers won't let go of Thelma Evans' charges, will they, Dan? And in spite of all your denials, the scandal takes hold and grows. Even some of your own supporters begin to think that where there's smoke, there's fire. Finally, at another uh, emergency meeting. Well, we've gone along with you as far as we're going to, Dan. Oh, bosh. The phony charges of a stupid little dancer send you all running for cover? I'll see this thing through. Alone? Well, you wouldn't dare dump me now. Oh, yes, we would. We're drafting Leslie Bryan to run for re-election huh. as the people's choice. Right, right. We expect you to jump on the bandwagon. So I have no choice. All right. All right, I'll go along. You withdraw from the race the following day, don't you, Dan? Giving ill health is the reason. Urging your supporters to re-elect Leslie Bryan. And almost immediately, Patricia turns her attention toward him, doesn't she? She's seen everywhere with him. One night, you're having a drink at the bar of the Precinct Political Club when... Don't you recognize old friends anymore, Dan? Reynolds, keep away from me. Oh, oh, oh. Now, we both clobbered each other. The score is tied, one to one. I don't think so. Okay, okay, nurse your grudge. But you know, there's something I'd like to know. Who tipped you off about the 611 Club? Why don't you tell me who engineered that cheap lawsuit and dug up that Thelma Evans? All right. 
I'll swap. I don't trust you. Well, what difference does it make now? We're both dead. That's so. Well, if you want to know, Leslie Bryan told me. Leslie Bryan. <laughs> well, what's so funny? <laughs> Leslie Bryan. <laughs> Leslie Bryan cooked up the Thelma Evans charges. What? I shelled out the money, but he hired her and had her flown in from the east. Oh. <laughs> Leslie Bryan didn't think he had it in him. Bryan. <laughs> Leslie Bryan. He got us both. <laughs> The more you think about it, the angrier you get. And the more you hate Leslie Bryan. The way he made a fool of both you and Stump Reynolds. And making almost certain his own re-election. An event which would greatly weaken, if not destroy, your chances of marrying Patricia Wolcott. And now you want Patricia more than ever. Suddenly it hits you. If something happened to Leslie Bryan, the main obstacle to your marriage to Patricia would be removed. And you love her enough to make certain something does happen to Leslie Bryan. Don't you, Dan? As the days pass, you wonder more and more just how to bring this about. And finally, a plan begins to take form. You know Leslie Bryan's habits. Know that he completes the routine business of his office in the evening hours when the city hall is deserted and he can work without disturbance. The following Monday evening, you leave your downtown apartment and take a cab to within a few blocks of the city hall. And you pay off the driver and walk the rest of the way. Let yourself in through a rear door left open for janitors and charwomen. Find your way to the mayor's office on the fourth floor without being seen. And then you grope your way through the dark reception room until you find the door to Leslie's private office. Who's there? Dan, Dan, you idiot. What are you doing? Put away that gun. Sorry, Leslie, but your political career is over. Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. And now, back to the Whistler. Now that Leslie Bryan is dead, you feel better, don't you, Dan? And you're sure you'll get away with it, aren't you? Mayors of large cities have been assassinated before, and that's what you're counting on that the police will consider it the work of some fanatic. You're at least certain that they will be slow in suspecting a man of your eminence. And so, Dan, when a detective from headquarters comes to your apartment an hour later, you're in an easy chair, a drink in hand, your feet resting comfortably on the hassock. You're a little surprised to see Patricia Walcott with the detective, but you don't let it disturb you. You answer all his questions frankly and openly. You're sure Brian had no enemies, Mr. Cobbs? In politics, everybody is your friend and your enemy. You were an enemy of Leslie Bryan's? Politically, yes. Uh But not personally? No, I wouldn't say so. What were you doing in his office this evening about the time he was killed? You're mistaken, officer. Oh, no, I'm not. I've been looking at the soles of your shoes for the last five minutes. There's a lot of pain on them. I don't know a lot about colors, but uh, I'd say it was aquamarine. So what? That doesn't mean I killed Leslie Bryan. It does, unless you can explain that paint. The painters were there this evening after the city hall closed at 5, and they left around 8. You must have gotten there about 9. I'm afraid you'll have to come down to headquarters, submit to a paraffin test. Now, just a minute. Oh, stop it, Dan. You killed Leslie Bryan, and you know it. Funny you should be caught by the aquamarine paint on the floor. It was you who gave the orders to have it done. Too bad you killed Leslie. You see, I would have stopped his re-election anyway. You? Yes, me. He was a crook like the rest of you. 
I had the goods on him on at least a half a dozen crooked paving and building contracts. I was going to give the story to the newspapers a week before the election. What's this? Oh, Dan, you don't really believe that Leslie thought of Thelma Evans or knew about Stump Reynolds' gambling habit? It was you. You're catching on. Sorry, Dan, that you won't be able to attend my wedding. Your wedding? Yes, I'm going to marry the man I've been engaged to these past two years. Simple, honest John Coleman, I believe you called him. The political science professor, remember? Our next mayor. 